as I mentioned, in this section, we're going to be working heavily with the Python Turtle module. And as we've seen before, this Turtle module is essentially a way for us to be able to draw graphics onto the screen. And you can imagine it as just this little wandering turtle with a pen on its back and everywhere it goes, it leaves a trail of line. So let's take a closer look at the Turtle graphics module. Now here, I've already created a brand new PyCharm project called Day 18 Start, and I've created a blank main.py. Inside this project, we're going to import our turtle. So as you saw from previous lessons, we can import the turtle module and get hold of the turtle class by simply saying from the turtle module, import the turtle class with the capital T. And now we can work with that class and we're going to use it to create a new turtle object. Let's call it Timmy the turtle. And this is going to be created from the turtle class. So this is going to be a new turtle object saved inside this variable. Now, when we actually run our project, you'll see a brief flash of a window and then it will disappear. In order for that window to stay where it is and only exit when we actually click on the window, we have to create another object, which we'll call our screen. And this comes from the turtle module as well. And it's a class called screen. We also have to import that if we want to use it. So now that we've got hold of the screen, we can use one of the functions called exit on click. So this way, when we run our code, we can see our turtle show up in the middle as this little arrow and our window won't disappear until we click on it. That's what exit on click does. So we need to keep this bit of the code at the very bottom. It has to happen after we've done all the stuff with turtle. So I'm going to move it to the bottom of the file. Now here's a question. How do I know how to do that? Is it because I am super experienced and I remember everything off the top of my head? No. Is it because I'm super clever and I can just work things out? No, that's definitely not the answer. The way that programmers go about figuring out how to use these modules or packages is through the use of documentation. So let's take a look at the Turtle Graphics documentation. And this is what the documentation looks like. It's a very, very long document that goes through all of the things that you can do with this module. Now, if we scroll down, you've got a contents page here and you can see the various things you can do with the turtle, control its motion or control the pen or change its visibility or appearance. Now let's take a look at this shape function. And you can see the documentation explains to us that this particular function will set the turtle's shape to one with a given name. And we can choose from the various shapes, including arrow, turtle, circle, square, triangle, and classic. So let's use this knowledge and change Timmy the turtle to have a different shape. So inside here, we can put any of those strings. So I'm going to change it to a turtle shape. This way, when I run my code, you can see an actual turtle appear on the screen. It just makes it a little bit easier to visualize what's going on with this module. Now, of course, you can change it to any of the other ones, test it out and see if it works. In an ideal world, you would read through the entire documentation of a module before you start using it. But of course, in the real world, we all know that that's not quite possible. Very often, you'll need the help of Stack Overflow. For example, if we wanted to look at Turtle Graphics and we wanted to change the shape of the turtle, then you can see that when you actually search for this inside the Stack Overflow search bar, your results are not very relevant. But if I put the same query into google.com and at the end I tag on the keyword Stack Overflow, we get results that are a lot more relevant. So if we take a look at this post, you can see that it's starting to talk about this shape method. 
And down here, this answer even links to the relevant part of the documentation, which we've already seen previously, this shape method. The idea is that you might need to Google around to see how to achieve a certain thing you want to do. And then once you've seen some of the methods that they mention in the answers, then go to the documentation and read up on it in order to actually understand what it does and how to use it. Coming back to our turtle, what if we wanted to change the color of the turtle? Well, this should be quite easy. We can see that in the color control section, we can use this color method to set the pen color and fill color. So for example, we could say Timmy the turtle dot color, and we can put in a string here like red. So now when I run my code, you can see that my turtle, Timmy, is now red instead of the previous default color of black. Now, how do I know which colors I can use other than the ones shown in the example, red or green? Well, it says that when we want to change the color using a color string or an RGB color, then it accepts inputs as in pen color. So it basically says it's using this method to set the color. And this method gets the color from a TK color specification string. So let's Google and see what that is. If we click on the first link, you can see it takes us to the strings and we've got a whole bunch of names and their corresponding RGB values. So what is this TK exactly? TK is short for the module TK Inter, which is the TK interface. And this is one of the ways that you can use Python to create a graphical user interface, which is also known as a GUI. If you think back to the beginning of computer history, if you think about the Apple Lisa one, that was the first computer that had a graphical user interface where it had a mouse and you can point and click. And this was huge back in the day. But before then, we had text interfaces like MS-DOS or like our console when we're using Python. The text interfaces accept text commands and the graphical user interfaces can show images and allows you to click and drag and do all of those things by looking instead of just typing commands. And TKinter is what the turtle module actually relies on under the hood to create these graphics like our turtle showing up here. So now that we've seen where these names come from, a much easier way of using these colors is through a page where they have all been rendered on screen. So in the course resources, we link to this page where you can see all the colors next to their names and you can pick and choose whichever one you want. Have a go at changing the color of the turtle by using one of these colors that you see on screen. Now that we've seen how we can create a new turtle and change its appearance, it's time to look at how we can make it do certain things. In the documentation, you can see there's a whole bunch of things you can do in terms of moving and drawing. A very simple one would be to move it forwards or to move it backwards. So we can tell it to move forwards by 100 paces. And when we rerun the code, this is what we see. So we can get it to move forwards, move backwards, and also move left and right. So here, the input that it takes is an angle, a number, between 0 and 360 to tell it what angle to turn right or to turn left. For example, currently our turtle is facing east. So if we want it to face south, then we have to get it to turn right by 90 degrees. So we can say Timmy the turtle dot right, and then we put 90 in here. And that's what it looks like. In the upcoming lessons, we've got a whole bunch of turtle challenges for you. That's going to test not only your knowledge of programming that you've learned so far, but also how well you can read and understand documentation. This is a key skill to acquire as a seasoned developer. Because after all, we can't always rely on other people telling us what to do. We have to be able to get it from the source. So make sure that you've got the documentation pulled up and have a glance through it. Then you can head over to the next lesson and start tackling some of these challenges. 
Now, remember that some of these challenges can be quite a bit of a struggle, but keep in mind that the struggle is good. The more that you struggle, the stronger you get. I'll see you on the next lesson.